How's it going everyone? Chad from Wonderspark Puppets and today, today we're going to do something a little bit different. This one goes out to all the teachers out there, all the uh, pre-K teachers and kindergarten first, let's say maybe even second. This one is for you. Uh, we're going to be making not puppets today, we're going to be making something to hold up your settings, right? Because uh, in puppet theater, we talk a lot about where does the story take place, right? I mean, we always make fun characters, right? But now we need to put in a setting, like where are the characters going to be? Where does each scene take place? And to do that, uh, instead of just holding up, <laughs> if you're doing a streaming school, sometimes the kids will, uh, if we make like a setting, they'll have to hold it up like this, uh, and then have to try and like puppeteer in front of it at the same time. Oh, it's tough. Uh, so, streaming school, uh, we're going to make something to hold up your scenery, right, where is this, like the Arctic Circle maybe, haven't decorated it yet, uh, and that'll make uh, it a lot easier for you to puppeteer, and I'm sure you've thought of this before, but here we go, <laughs> this is how we officially do it. We're going to make today a cardboard triangle, that's right, it's a miracle of modern science, ladies and gentlemen. So. With this, <laughs> you can take the scenery or the setting that your kids or your students have made and plop it right whoop, on top and then put a puppet, ooh, maybe secure it with some tape, and then put a puppet right in front of it. And you, don't have to you don't have to worry about holding this up. This is sitting right in front of an iPad, right in front of a laptop, on a table, done. Uh, maybe secure it with some tape and then we can puppet you right in front of it. So, this is how we do it. <laughs> Here it is, uh, down there. All right, so this is what we need for our workshop today, our cardboard triangle. We need one piece of paper. We need cardboard, and uh, a cardboard enough that a bunch of pieces of paper can fit on it. We're gonna need, ignore my little rubber duck, that's for later. We're gonna need some scissors and some strong tape. So. First thing, oh, and maybe a marker too, because why not? You know, this would be helpful. So first thing we're gonna do, take our piece of paper and we're gonna measure it right here, okay? Now there's already this natural fold happening right there. So I don't know if you can see that, yeah. So if it's if your cardboard is a little bit shorter than your piece of paper, that's fine. We just wanna make sure to have enough coverage so that the piece of paper can sit on there and not go anywhere, okay? Um, Let's say in an ideal world, you'd want the entire thing. So we're just gonna measure this out, which is I'm holding the piece of paper down so it's exactly where I want it to be. We're gonna measure this out. Is it a perfect measure? Nope, not at all, and that is fine. We're going to then take the piece of paper and slide it down, check that out. So we have two pieces of paper length, and we're going to just outline this white piece of paper. Oops, and you know what? If you, uh, <laughs> in this class, if you can get something on the piece of paper, that's totally fine. We could use this as a scrap paper later. All right, once you have that, so I have two, ooh, two lengths of paper outlined right here. Then we're going to take it once more and we're not gonna do the entire thing for three. All right, three paper lengths. We're just gonna take like three inches out and measure that. Okay, we're, we're gonna outline that. So we're just gonna outline this semi-perfectly. Dun, 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 like so. So you will have something like this. So there's one, two paper lengths and then uh, something that's a, that's like a rectangle, like three or four inches, this is gonna be the bottom of your triangle. You don't want it too thin, you don't want it too wide, you want it just like Goldilocks, just right, okay? Now we're going to cut them out. This is just gonna be one long, continuous piece. So here we go, we're gonna cut that out. I have one pair of scissors, I don't know about you at home, but I have one pair of scissors that I use for everything, not your sewing scissors. Nope, this is just a, a good pair of junk drawer scissors that just sits around waiting for, ooh, waiting to cut out cardboard. There exist awesome things called cardboard knives, which uh, don't cut you, but are beautiful at cutting cardboard. That would be the best for this job. 
we're just going to use what you have at home. Uh, it's always good if you can get an adult to do this because cutting cardboard is kind of hard. Especially because this kind of setup is best for little kids. So if it gets a little too tough cutting one way, and it will, yeah, just flip it around, start cutting the other way, meet it in the middle. Ooh, and when we get this all cut, look at that, just tearing through there. Woo! We're gonna have this beautiful slice of cardboard, and we're going to fold this now. So here's what it looks like: two eight and a half by elevens. Oh wait, two eight and a half by elevens, and then one thin strip. We're gonna fold it right on those uh, outline black marker spots that we said before. So we're gonna fold it right here on the line, okay? We, we're gonna do this by scoring it a little bit, by using our thumbs, right, to kind of push in there, make a little bit of a mark. You can also do this with a tool. If you take a, piece, like a, a hard tool, you kind of score it by pushing down hard on that outline. This just makes it a little easier and a little cleaner to fold it. Look at that beautiful fold right where I wanted it because we scored it in advance. We just want to mush this. We're going to knead this like it's a bread dough. And then that's a pretty good fold, right? Okay, we're going to do the same with this fold right here. Same thing. Let's take, you know, let's just, let's do it this way. We're just going to grab that scissors that we had before and mush down to make a nice line like that. Oh yeah, beautiful. And fold it up. Ta-da! Now we have this foldy bit of cardboard. Now notice, mine kind of looks like, because I had this extra fold going on, it doesn't exactly look like a car uh, piece of cardboard. But that's okay. We have one flat side, and that's all we need. Now we're going to take our strong tape, and we're going to tape this together, like so. I'm going to tape those parts together. So here we go. We're going to take our strong tape. You can use as many pieces as you want. What we like to do is attach it to one side first, line it up perfectly, and then tape those edges together. When I say perfectly, I mean, you know, semi-perfectly. Once you have the outside secure, like so. We're going to put a piece of tape on the inside too, and that'll make it double strong. I'm using uh, duct tape today. Woo! Goodbye. Uh, but you can use whatever tape you like as long as it's strong and as long as it's going to stay. Okay. We're just going to stick so I'm sticking it on the inside there. And it, I'm sorry you can't witness. <laughs> this part, <laughs> but trust me, the tape is now on the inside. You can kind of see it there. And that just helps that to stay together. Does it stand by itself? This is the real test. If no, then I would suggest finding something heavy to put inside to act as a weight, right? Like a small water bottle. Does this tape even fit in there? Oh, look at that. The tape fits right in there. Just something to weigh it down. And now look. Ta-ta! It's all done. And now I'm going to get everything this is, that just fell down here. Uh, we can use that same piece of paper, tape it on front. We can also stick like a book or something on top. This could be scenery, right, if we're doing like the sea. And then the puppets, this very simple puppets that we make, can go in front of this scenery, right? So this could be puppet number one interacting with maybe puppet number two, which is, is not made at this moment, but um, here you are. And so this is how we can perform for a camera uh, without having to hold up this end and then you know also do puppets. We can focus on both of our hands doing simple rod puppets at the same time. And by the way, this is just a pen taped on the back to a piece of construction paper. It can be as simple as that, and a pre-K student can make this. Um, maybe not as nice, I don't know what I call this nice, but pre-K students can totally get this. It can be done. So I hope you enjoyed this workshop. Once again, this is, this is a shout out to 
all of our pre-K and K and maybe first grade teachers, anybody who is teaching puppetry maybe or using puppetry as a tool to tell stories uh, online through streaming school. That's what we've been doing and this is how we do it is we make a cardboard triangle and we tape scenery that kids make to the front. Okay. So thank you so much once again for watching. My name is Chad from Wonderspark Puppets. We're doing DIY stuff all the time. So check us out online sometime at wondersparkpuppets.com. Okay, thank you and see you next time.